Hello and welcome to another tutorial. So this is the third and final part of the series where we were setting up the new interaction system. So in the previous sections we had built up our core of that new logic. Uh, we had also gone through and set up the systems for being able to select an interaction and did some groundwork in terms of updating things like our prefabs and also so a lot of the behavioral side of things of getting that ready to be usable. What we're going to be doing in this is now actually updating the behaviors themselves and getting all of that up and working so that we have our new interaction system going. So as always with these ones, uh, you will find three links in the description below. The first is a link to the code as it currently is at this point in the video. The second link will be to the code as it is at the end of the video. And the third link will be to the completed package. So that completed package, depending upon when you're accessing it, uh, if you are accessing it a fair time after this video has been recorded, then there may be further additions and changes there to that. So that's something just to be aware of. But let's dive on in. Our goal with this is we're going to be, at the moment, we have behaviors for our actual logic in terms of our interactions, those sit at that sample level. We're going to be moving those down into our core logic and we're going to be moving things like the behavior tree nodes associated with that. So all of those are going to be moving to that lower level and we're going to be getting rid of the old system. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move these behaviors. So things like our actions here, uh, these uh, particular are select interaction and are use interactable. We're going to move those down to our, uh, those go into our behavior tree and into action nodes. So that's good. We are going to do similar for our state machine. So our select and use interactable ones, those move down here as well. So we're just moving all of these things first. Our BT actions, so our use interactable, that can move down to our common ones here uh, and that will be grumpy for a little bit that's okay and then we can move our goal for using the interactable as well so that moves down to our common goals so we've moved a bunch of bunch of the files those are ones that we're going to need to do uh, quite a few updates too, because they're obviously in different locations now. So things are going to work a little bit differently. So one of the key things is I want to update the namespace that ones are in to make sure that's correct. So we just go through and fix up those firstly, just so we don't forget really easy to forget it and then they wouldn't be linked up correctly uh, so we need to move our sm action for using an interactable as well so we didn't move that one here Uh, so some things get a little a little grumpy initially uh, until we fix them up, which is okay. Now we need to update our nodes because we had our select and use interactable. So those also get updated. Pretty much anything uh, that was put into the demo scenes uh, namespace gets changed with this. So those are updated. I don't think we've changed any services. 
did update our states. So those need to be modified. Nope. Sometimes the autocomplete stuff is here spot on for what it should be doing. Other times just gets a little confused. So, okay, that's good. We've got those transferred. Uh, now what we are going to do is we are going to break some stuff. So this is most easily updated really by making a pretty major breaking change. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find in our framework essentials our smart objects folder. So this just has scripts and logic in there for it. So it, I'm going to delete it. And when I do, a whole lot of things are going to get super grumpy. Uh, and now this set of things that are grumpy looks small. And that's because we've partitioned things into assemblies. So at the moment, it's only giving us errors from the low level assemblies, it's not actually giving us the full set of errors yet. So, because it hasn't been able to process anything further because uh, we interrupted the process of being able to build those assemblies. So anything that was dependent upon them is not yet showing errors. So at the moment, this looks like there's just only a couple of, you know, small, simple errors, but that's not actually the case. We will get to fixing those. Uh, but the first thing I actually want to do is also this smart object manager that needs to go. And our interactables in our character core, we need to make sure we've actually got that registry in the scene. So I'm going to create an empty game object, just reset its position. And I'm going to attach the registry. I'm going to rename this registry and I will prefab that. Create an empty folder for it just so we're being neat. Uh, and so any scene, as we go through and update them, that's what we'll be changing. We'll be removing the smart object uh, manager and we'll be adding in that interactable registry. So, okay, let's start fixing these errors and the things that it's going to be grumpy at us about. Uh, so I'm going to start with the behavior tree side. So, okay are selecting of the interaction. So this process is going to work a fair bit differently to how it did before. One of the big changes, and this is one of the nice aspects with this update, is I don't need to pass in this function anymore. So that is no longer a thing. So we just delete all of that. So it makes this a little bit cleaner and neater. So that's good. Uh, now in terms of what we are storing in our blackboard, this is sort of a common area we're going to need to update. So I'm going to actually rework a bit how we work with these. So if I go to where these are defined, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, renaming of things firstly. So I'm gonna rename this one where it's referring to the smart object that now refers to the interactable. Uh, the interaction and the type that actually is still kind of accurate because it's going to be the particular I interaction uh, supporting object that's there. So that's okay. But I also want to have in here the actual interaction point. So where we're trying to perform our interaction. So interaction point and 
we'll just store that. So that's good. That's sort of a standard set of updates we want to have for all of these. So now if I go back to this, which I was updating, so that changes to be I interactable. This changes to be I interaction. And then we now have a new one, which is our I interaction point. Here, where we were checking, okay, if the uh, interaction function was valid, that actually is different. We should be checking if our interaction interface, which to find that, we go to our owning tree and our interaction interface. If that's null, then we fail out. We also, there's no point trying to select an interaction if we don't have a performer. So if our owning tree former interface is null, then I'm also going to fail out. Doing those on separate lines, just so if something odd happened, uh, then it's very clear which line from a call stack the problem is on. So, okay, that's good. We've done that checking to make sure that those are valid. Then what I'm going to store here is our I interactable. This will be our found interactable. We're going to have our interaction which is our found interaction. And we'll have the interaction point, found point. Then what we can do is we can say, hey, well, owning tree, my interaction interface, I want you to pick an interaction. Here is the performer. And then I can provide our uh, different ones for our found interactable, our uh, found interaction. And so, okay, at this point, I know I have found an interactable, I know I found an interaction, I'm going to attempt to lock it because then I can say, okay, well, found interaction, I want you to lock, and here is the performer. And also here is the point. So if that was successful in finding all of those, then we can actually populate all of these keys because we have that information. So our interactable here, that's found interactable. Our type is found interaction. And this should have been interaction point. Point as well. And we do found uh, point like that. So if that was the case, then we succeeded. So we can just go and run all of that because we know that we have successfully found it, we can say that we've succeeded. And what that means is that we get rid of all of this logic, there's less stuff we need to do there, and we just fail out otherwise. So it's actually a lot simpler and a lot cleaner for doing that searching process, because it's quite straightforward what it actually needs to do. Uh, now we're currently doing this in on tick, so I'm actually going to change that because I think it would make more sense to do this in our on enter. So switch over to on enter, and we will run the base one, even though I'm pretty sure the base one does nothing. Doesn't hurt to actually do that. That does change the how we actually do the return stuff here. So these change a little bit. What we do is we set the last status to failed. 
and we just return like that. Good. Down the end here, we will also set the status to failed. And this one does a return as well, but we set the last status uh, that we succeeded. So that looks good. So slight difference in the sort of setup logic there for it, uh, but makes it cleaner and neater for working with it. We'll still have the tick, not that the tick should ever actually get run, uh, but that's something that we can populate it. And all it needs to do is our set status, calculate return of the last status. So that's good. That's what the setup looks like for our selecting of the interaction. So pretty straightforward. The using of the interactable, we should update that at the same point in time because that's going to make life easier for us. So with this, well, we already didn't need to take in a lot of stuff here, uh, but in terms of how we actually use it, so what I'm going to do is firstly, try and retrieve our interactable. So this is our target interactable. Oops. So for retrieving this, because it's an interface, I need to do with the linked blackboard, the interface in this case is try get storable. And I tell it that it's an I interactable. I give it the common core uh, names and our interaction interactable. Uh, we also have our usual setup where the out for that is the target interactable and the default is null. So, okay, we try and retrieve it. Now, what we could, we could validly retrieve it and what we validly get is null. So if the target interactable is null, then what I'm going to do is firstly, just null out all of those keys in case there is stray data there, just because we should reset it. And then what I will do is set the last status to failed and return. So first we retrieve the interactable, then we're gonna follow the same process to then retrieve the interaction. So we have the I interaction. So this is our target interaction. We're retrieving I interaction. And this is our type one. So if that fails, we also exit out and clear everything. So we leave stuff in a clean state. This is our target point. So we properly null check that. This is our I interaction point. Change this to be using the point. We make sure we update this as well fix this one because I didn't update it either. So that should be I interaction point. So that's good. So at this point, if we get to here, we know we have our interactable, we know we have our interaction, and we also have our interaction point. That means we have everything we need for being able to kick off the interaction. So I'm going to have a bool to track whether we started. And if we started, that's based on, we do our target interaction. And I think it is begin interaction. So we tell it the performer. So that's good. Now, I don't want to provide anything for the began callback. I don't want to provide anything for the tick callback but I do for the completion callback. So 
So I'm going to provide just a little code snippet here that what this is going to do is, okay, we know that we have completed the interaction. So I tell that interaction to unlock and who's unlocking it. I'm going to do the clearing that I did here for all of these because we should, once we're done with an interaction, wipe it from the blackboard because we have nothing further to do. Uh, and we already have this, but our has finished interaction gets set to true. Then what we do here in terms of our status, all of the rest of that goes, because our status here becomes, okay, if we did successfully start, then it's in progress, otherwise we failed. So that looks good. That will give us the logic for it being able to actually use it. And that's a nice sort of clean, clean way of retrieving it. So we're checking each stage of it. So that's good. So we've got some less errors. Uh, we do have our brain base for the behavior tree is grumpy at us. And that's our initial cleaning sort of setup stuff here. So I'm going to again replace those. So those get properly cleared out. So that looks good. Uh, the rest of that all looks completely fine. I think, yeah, there's nothing else we need with that. So that should get rid of a couple more of those errors. So, okay, so far so good. Now our state machine side of things, that one is going to need to be updated as well. So if we go to our select interactable, so the process for updating this is going to be similar, but the difference is, is the state machines don't currently uh, have a lot of you know, sort of pre-cached information. That's something I might change at a later point, bring them more in line with the behavior trees in that regard. It'll simplify their interfaces. Uh, but up till now, I haven't actually done that. So this does change a bit. We don't pass in this function anymore. What we do pass in instead is our interaction selector, which I will keep the names consistent, because that just makes life easier with transferring code. Uh, I still have the performer as well, so I need those passed in. So our constructor, how this changes is rather than having that function passed in, I instead have my interaction selector. That gets passed in, and also my performer needs to be passed in. Then what I can do here is store those. So that's good. Then in terms of how the actual set logic and everything here sort of works, it's going to be very similar to what we had for the behavior tree. So with this, what we can actually do is for our select, what I would do as a starting point is I would take all of the logic here and I would just bring it directly over because it is the same processes that we want to be performing here. And again, at some point in the future, I probably will find a way to uh, sort of centralize these so that they are you know, consistent. So how this looks, largely all that changes is we get rid of the accessing of owning tree because we've directly got the performer interface. Uh, how we handle success and failure changes. We can actually just directly return with this one. So we 
have our failed indication for that. Have a couple of other ones that can be the same. But otherwise, the logic is identical for it, which is what should happen. That's what we want with this. We don't want to have uh, multiple different versions uh, of the logic if we can avoid it. So keeping it consistent is good. And that's it for updating the state logic. So that select interactable just works exactly the same way. It doesn't need to work any differently. Uh, now, in terms of our use interactable, well, our use interactable doesn't need the interaction interface, but it does need the performer. So I use one. I'm going to bring that over. And I'm going to bring over uh, this as well. So that has to be passed in for this one. It's kind of unavoidable at this stage, but again, that is something I will be updating in the future to make them a bit more uh, consistent. And especially now that I've got some good reference points for how the things get used, uh, that's going to make it a lot easier for doing that. So that's good. Now, in terms of the using interactable here, again, we can follow this same process that we did here, where we do all of the retrieving and we kick things off. We can just use that entirely as a base for this. Uh, so for the using of the interactable, we get here, we do this. Now, obviously one of the big changes, we get rid of owning tree, that isn't necessary. So that's good. We're doing all of the retrieval stuff there. Uh, we do have a few ones where our return values get changed. So all of these failure mode ones get updated. Then, in terms of what we return, okay, I can say that we return, and if we started, I'm just going to delete all of that, because if we started, our state is running, otherwise it failed. And then in the on exit, where it's doing all of that cleanup there, we can do this exact same logic here. So that's good. So what we'll likely find now is that we get different set of errors. So our brain base needs the same, which is not surprising. Let's get properly reset. So now we're back to just as many errors as we had at the beginning. And that's to be expected because that was what I was explaining with the setup in terms of with the assemblies. Uh, you know, the lower level assemblies of the behavior tree and the state machine, those had errors, so they weren't fully building, so we weren't seeing the full scope of all of the errors yet. We still might not be seeing the full scope of all the errors, because these are now in a different assembly. They are all in the same assembly, uh, but they are in a different one. So that's something where you know, exactly the number of errors that we run into is going to be pretty variable. But let's start getting these updated now. So again, I'm going to begin with the behavior tree one. So this is our actual GOP uh, action. Now, the good news is, is updating this is actually pretty straightforward because what we do is, well, our select interaction function, that actually goes. We just get rid of that. We don't need that. Our behavior tree reset, we'll look at how we update that in a moment. Uh, our get interactable location, there's definitely things we need to change with that. Our select interaction, we can delete that. So that's good. So, okay, what we want to do here for getting our interactable location, that actually changes a little bit, but in a pretty straightforward way. What I also want to do is because we actually have our oriented points, I can now 
setup here, uh, get destination orientation. This is a thing that we added, it was a very small change, so it wasn't a specific video. Uh, but the idea is that it allows us to say, okay, for the particular destination we're heading to, which way should we be facing? And because interactables have that information there, that's something that we want to make sure we're supporting. So, okay, our location, the way we're retrieving it there is fine. But what I want to retrieve here is I'm going to get to the interaction point like that. So this becomes uh, I interaction point target point like that. Uh, we try to get a storable of I interaction point. What we retrieve here is our interaction point, and that goes to our target point. So if that target point is not null, then our location that we return back here is just going to be our target point and our point position. Otherwise, we just return our invalid constant, and so that thins down as well. So it just means this is a lot simpler in terms of what we're actually doing. The orientation retrieval is similarly a lot more simple, a lot simpler. Uh, what we would be doing here though is rather than point position, we would be going and saying, okay, well, get me the point transform and I want its uh, forward vector. So that's pretty straightforward for it. So these should be happier with us. We also can delete stuff like this. We don't use that anymore. So again, less stuff, always good. The more we can delete, the better. Uh, now this one, I need to just check the order that stuff got put in here. Oh, that's right, that null goes away. I had put in the null as a placeholder. Okay, so that's good. And what about our resetting? That needs to actually change. So I'm going to change this to what I'm retrieving here is our interaction. So this is a current interaction. I switch to our try get storable. And what I'm wanting to retrieve is not the interaction, but the interaction type. And that goes into the current interaction. So if we have one, so if it was actually valid, then we can just go, okay, well, current interaction, I want you to abandon it. And here is our performer interface. So it's a lot cleaner for actually doing the resetting logic there. There's less that we need to do. Uh, we will clear out all of those as well. So I'm just going to find where I was doing the setup here, just because it makes it easier if we can just reuse what we've already got. So I can take that and apply it there. So that changes how our interactable one works. So we've got no further ones in our behavior tree action. So that's good. Our state machine action is going to be pretty similar, unsurprisingly, in terms of the updates. We no longer have that Unity event. Uh, when we are selecting our interactions here, what we pass in is our interaction interface and our performer interface. And then use interactable, we pass in performer interface. So it just 
again makes it easier for being able to work with these. There's just less things that we need to do. Our get interactable location, well that's going to be exactly the same as our behavior tree one. So I can take what I did here for the behavior tree one for our location and our orientation and I can bring those over to this and I can make sure I update the calculate move so that null changes to get destination orientation so that's good and then our reset logic is also going to be the same how that works is exactly what we were doing here just paste all of that in so it is simpler for the cleanup uh, despite there being additional parameters it's working with it's actually less that it's needing to do so we can check that so again less things complaining at us uh, our brain base we've got these to update which is not surprising because we had to update that in a few areas so we'll apply that same change to that and that's good so now we get other ones grumpy at us but again we'll see that those errors are now happening in the demo scenes area so these are within our samples so we've fixed all of the errors in the earlier ones so this should actually be our final set of errors that we need to fix up so we're going to normally i would start at the very first one but i'm going to actually start with the uh, brain base because that has a bunch of stuff here for interactions and all of that actually needs to go so it gets gotten rid of uh, the other thing that we can get rid of from it is this default interactable search range might be a few other ones where we have that same variable so i'm just going to search for if there's anywhere else using that uh, so there are We've got a few ones actually that are using that. So a standalone base, and that has again those interactable helpers. So we get rid of that. So a few other ones. This will likely cause a few things to break, and that's actually okay because uh, I want any of the things that are dependent on the old system. Uh, if they're going to be there, I want them to break now okay so we've got a lot less errors that actually was the source of a bunch of our errors uh, which is handy so it means then we've got our standalone sims ai uh, ones need to be updated so those are two ones that we need to fix i'm going to get rid of all of these and there might still end up being some residual things we need to clean up in those others uh, but for now, this at least gets us a small set of ones. So, okay, let's start with our standalone Sims AI one. So these are our interaction functions and we had our location functions. So, okay, these, a good basis for that is then going to be our BT and SM actions that we just actually updated those are going to be really good source for this so my two functions here for getting our interactable location and the destination orientation i will bring those over and we don't need that select interaction function anymore so that gets gotten rid of uh, we can update our behavior tree. We haven't updated the direction there yet, but that's okay. And we haven't updated this interactable desire yet. That's going to be a later one. Uh, this I will change 
this function to get interaction direction just so that because this is the standalone behavior tree it has a lot of other things that it's working with so it's going to just avoid collisions there so that looks good then the other things that will be grumpy is that resetting logic and that's okay because we can use our exact reset setup here That's good. There will still be a couple of errors, but I just wanted to get rid of uh, as many as I could with that. For the standalone Sims one, again, going to have pretty similar changes that we need to make. So my two get interaction functions, I will bring those over and replace these ones like that. And that will change our states that we have here for interaction, because what we will have is our interaction interface and our performer interface. This one gets the performer interface and our calculate move. We then also have get interactable direction. So that looks good. Got a couple of errors down here, which are our expected ones. So we bring over the resetting logic and we'll update that. Make sure we save everything. So we will still have errors. We still know that there are things that are going to be breaking. And so the main things that are breaking is this get use interactable desire. That's grumpy at us and our look at handler is also grumpy at us, which is fine. So those need to be updated as well, but the updates for those are relatively straightforward. So our looking at logic needs to be updated because it's still trying to use the old smart object system. So this, we retrieve our interaction so current interaction that gets modified. We try, and with this, we don't actually want the interactable. We just want the interaction type. We try to get our storable and our interaction like that. We check that we've got a current interaction, that that was actually valid. Uh, we need to make sure that it has look targets. So it has look targets. That needs to not be null. And so what I might actually do is change that to has look targets. And actually on the interaction, uh, create a little helper here. So let's create a uh, pool. There's like of that. So we'll need to update our simple interaction. And we're just going to set up, we've got our general logic there. Uh, where is a good point for adding this? I think here, public pool uh, has look targets. And that's just going to be if look targets count is greater than zero. Actually, we'll do a null check as well. So look targets is not null, and it actually has valid entries. Just because a few things are accessing it, so it just makes it, again, cleaner and neater to set that up as a supported bit of uh, behavior. So, okay, we know that we've got an interaction. We know that the interaction has look targets. Now, there could be multiple. There isn't any locking or anything like of that with these. So all I'm going to do is go through our target in 
uh, current interaction dot look targets and I'm going to check okay if that look target is valid and we go for our target and we want our location like that so if it's valid then we set our target position is our target get location and we can return otherwise we just actually continue on there's nothing further that we can validly do there so that looks good that's our look handler updated uh, now this is one of the areas that we haven't updated that we need to look at a solution for because the way we worked with this previously was figuring out if we could interact just actually use the get interactable desire so what I'm going to do a couple of things with this firstly I'm going to actually just check do I currently have an interactable so current interaction actually I can just check for a current interaction so current interaction so we'll say okay our no I don't need an if there for that uh, I can do our blackboard and we'll do a try get storable of our interaction and what we're trying to retrieve common core names our uh, interaction type that gets output to current interaction and a default of null so that's good so if we don't have a current interaction then that's something where okay we need to check if there are valid ones if we did have a current interaction then I can just skip over this and we'll return true so if there's a current interaction it can only succeed if we actually have a valid one so I might flip that around so if current interaction is null is not null we return true and I'll make false the failure case uh, so okay if we're currently already interacting with something then can interact just stays as true otherwise what we actually do is we're going to say our interaction interface we're going to try and pick an interaction uh, and then this is our performer interface uh, found interactable and found interaction so we actually let it do a search we can just directly return that that does mean we need to be able to store that somewhere uh, and just like that so that just allows us uh, to determine if we can interact but if we already already are interacting then we just automatically continue so it avoids it interrupting itself so most of this is working that is able to be fixed up like that so so far so good nothing seems to visibly be breaking uh, if we take a look at the prefab to make sure it looks okay so far all of that looks okay but we'll notice the goal here there's unlinked things so this is one that doesn't show up as an error because this used to bind to a particular function which we've deleted that so the goal I need to get rid of that event and then I need to figure out what I want to do here with this well I already updated the standalone behavior tree uh, to have this logic so this is probably a good starting point so what I would say is okay if we have a valid interaction then what I should do 
is a priority can largely just actually stay the same. I should probably with this say our priority is going to be, because we used to just directly set it. So I'm going to say that it's medium because we're already interacting with it. It used to go between low and high, uh, depending upon the desire. That desire was always just hard coded as a particular value. Actually, I might make that high. We're currently already doing something. Uh, otherwise, then we need to do the searching. Now we don't return something here, but we will have a found interaction. And bring that logic here up into this. And then what I will do is what we uh, do in terms of priority, not what we return. Uh, but if we found an interaction, then I'm going to say that the priority is our goal priority. And we might just go for it being medium. Otherwise, I didn't find one in which case the priority is to not run. So that looks good. We'll just make sure we potentially now have zero errors, hopefully. So at this point, we've got no errors and we're pretty much ready to start testing. What I will do, because we've made a lot of code changes, uh, one of the things I tend to do is I run uh, this in Visual Studio of the code cleanup. What that does is that just gets rid of, if there are any usings that you're not actually uh, directly referencing, it gets rid of them. So it just keeps things a little neater and helps sort of correct those cases where you know, the tools have gone and just automatically added in a bunch of ones that you're not actually using. Uh, but otherwise that looks pretty good because we updated all of these. Uh, the one thing I will change with our two use interactable ones here is if we didn't start and we're failing out, then I'm going to do a clear as well, just to be on the safe side. I think that just makes it a little bit safer. So do that with our one here. So both of our use interactable ones for the state and for the behavior tree. So that's good. Now, I think there might still be our smart object manager prefab lurking around in our framework essentials. We'll just double check. Yes, so that we can delete as well. Yeah, in any case where we can get rid of things that we don't need is always good. So we've got a bunch of scenes we're going to need to test this in. Uh, to begin with, I am actually just going to test this uh, only in this particular scene, the normal regular behavior tree one uh, for the Sims AIs. So we've saved everything. So let's find out. Does this actually work or does it just immediately start crashing and breaking? Hopefully it works. Okay, so we head it over. We can see there are performers. They are currently browsing aimlessly. We'll see what they go and do next. So they're uh, now reading some comics and we can see before they wouldn't have actually faced the correct direction, but uh, we did get an error here where it was saying that it was uh, modifying a collection. So collection was modified, the enumeration may not execute. So that happened with multiple of these ones. Uh, so that happened when it was doing this tick here. So if we take a look at the logic that can happen in an interactions tick, what has likely happened is when it's ticked, it's completed. And then that ticking has uh, tried to modify this. 
So there's a collision that's able to be happening there, which is less than desirable. So what I would do for handling something like of that is because our interactions already actually only tick if something is set up to be running on it, I can just change this to be doing that ticking because that's it's not necessarily a bad thing for all of the interactions to be able to tick because there might be the logic we want them to do. Uh, but that should work for filtering that out. So what I'm going to do, just because this is the way to really find out if things are going to break, uh, is I'm going to add in two other ones. Because as soon as you have more, that's where if there's been things that were missed, that's where they're most likely to show up. So let's test this out. So, okay, we can see two of them are using the same bookshelf. That was good. One of them's going over and using that. They're trying to move around each other. And we do see they do that turning at the end, which is great, so that they're facing and orienting towards the correct location. So, okay, that scene looks good. Now, although they're not sort of likely to have been uh, broken, these other scenes do still have that smart object manager. So I'm going to get rid of it, uh, but I will add in our actual prefab for our interactable registry. Not that we're using it, but I think useful to have it sort of there. Uh, but what we should hopefully see is that nothing breaks uh, when we run these. So no errors, which is good. We want to make sure that they can find us wherever the AI is. They should be moving around. There we go. They're still behaving, still following us. So that's good. So that's the Sims one. We know it's fine. Our RTS one. We know we need to delete the smart object manager and we'll add in our registry. This. They're still behaving okay. They can still move to things. We'll likely see it drop into gather in a moment. Yep, so that's all working. So that's excellent. We check our village test scene also. It's going to be the same update that we did for these other ones. Get rid of the smart object manager, bring in the registry, and we'll just test that that behaves itself. So I'm interested in the interactables, but we are interested in the villages. But it is handy having that interactables debugger there. So, okay, so far so good. All the individual behavior tree plus goat ones work. Uh, let's look at our state machine based ones then. We do the same, getting rid of the smart object manager, bringing in the registry. These are quicker to test because we've pretty much validated the logic by now. So we know that things are going to be fine, which it is. So that's one state machine one that's good. Same update for all of these. Standalone ones are the ones where it's more likely that we might run into uh, some weird behaviors just because those uh, sort of doing things in a bit of a different way than what these ones were. You can see they're gathering resources, so that looks good. Uh, our Sims style one. This one's an important one. We need to make sure we've got the registry. And what I will do is I will straight off 
actually go for having multiple of them. Just because we've validated a lot of the logic already. So I'm more interested in stress testing it with multiple ones. So we did have a complaint about a missing script. So our TV, we need to revert that prefab. So that's one that we missed. Uh, we'll check other ones like the microwave and all, those look to be fine. So let's try that again. We should see no warnings. So that's good. Both of them are using that. Both of them are reading comics. Excellent. So that's good. They're behaving how we would want. Uh, that then leaves our village one, which again, add in the registry, get rid of the smart object manager and test it. We'll have all of our different ones. So they're off doing their particular thing. That's good. So, so far, so good. All of those scenes. So that's all of the GOAP related scenes are working how we would want. Let's go to our standalone ones. As I said, this is, if we're going to run into issues, it's more likely going to be in the standalone ones. Uh, just because they are a bit more complicated. Now, the first person one, we shouldn't run into any issues. They're moving around. They will start chasing us. So that's good. So that one's fine. RTS one should be straightforward. Shouldn't really have affected any of the other ones, but it was just a, like a wise thing to be checking them just to make sure so that nothing has broken. And we need to remove the old stuff from the scenes anyway. So our standalone Sims one, this is the one that might break if any of them are going to. Uh, just because the TV had issues on the other one, yep. That needs to be reverted. Good. And similar to with the other ones, I will just create multiple copies to begin with. Should see that they go and do their interactions, which they are. I want to see them vary between what ones they're doing. Sometimes they're going and wandering. These do work differently in that they do have a cooldown that they apply between interacting. So that's good. Excellent. So that's that uh, behavior tree one. We need to update the village. So even though the village and things like that aren't using interactables, I want to update them so that they could support it useful to have things where there's more of the behaviors being able to run. So it's good. They're doing their thing. Now let's update our standalone state machine ones. Just need to do our deletion. And they get pretty quick to test by this point because they're largely using the same logic. A little bit of foot sliding at times there with the animation, but that's an unrelated problem that I'm still looking into. Our RTS one. Doing their thing, so that's good. So nearly done with verifying all of our scenes. Our state machine based standalone one. Again, that's one of the likely ones that could, if it was going to run into issues, run into ones. And we revert the prefab like that. Just create our multiple copies. Again, we've got a few ones. Just want to see that they all go and interact with things which they do, they're looking at them, 
they're properly interacting. They'll have a little bit of a cooldown in between, so that's where they do like a short wander away, and then they'll go and actually interact with something again. So you can see that, that they're still doing their idle for a little bit. That one's finished, is going back and interacting. That one's heading over there, so they're behaving as we would want them to. And then finally updating the village one. Getting rid of that, and we'll test it just to make sure it loads also. Which it does, and they're running their behaviors, so they idle for a bit, and then they'll go and actually do what we need them to. So that's good. So all of those scenes are behaving themselves. Uh, if I go to the behavior tree one again, and yeah, we've already got quite a few ones here. Let's stress it out with a few more. Let's give it five ones. I just want to give it a full range of things uh, to be being done. So bookcases, super popular. Uh, no one's trying to use the TV currently. So we'll just see if any actually go and try to use the TV. There's no performers for that. What I'm going to do is I'll free up the number of ones that we've got here. And if I go to the TV, our interactions here, all these things like the various programs, they actually should allow a lot more people to be using them. So I'm going to allow up to three. And I want to just make sure that the TV does actually function. So I'm going to apply all of those overrides. And what I'm going to do is I am going to turn off these other ones for now. So that the only thing that can be interacted with is the TV. Let's just make sure that it behaves. So what we're seeing is none of them are interacting with the TV. So something is going wrong uh, with that being able to interact logic. So what I'm going to do is just debug into that. So at this point here, it's going to step in. And we want to just check here. So interactions is valid now. But we did see a case where it wasn't, so I'm going to just leave a breakpoint there because uh, I think that's useful for us to know. So we are looping through the active interactions. Nothing there would be causing it to fail out. And I'm going to put breakpoints on each of these ones where it returns false. So that looks okay. We're looking for usable points. Everything there is indicated as being usable. So that's not what's causing it to fail over. The in interaction is null, which we expect. So we're just going to check if any of the interactions are usable. Now, those are then running the logic on the parent. And so what we're checking here is okay, if it is on, does that interaction require power, which we know a few of those ones do. And the one we're checking is toggle power. So if it's not on and the interactions require power, ah, so this is the problem. So it's not currently on, but what we're returning is we'd be returning true if the interactions didn't require power. So we should actually here, we can stop that running. This should actually be returning that it does not require, not contain it. Now we should hopefully find that they can actually go and interact with the TV. So yep, one goes, toggles the power. Now 
whole bunch of them are getting there and trying to watch stuff. They are managing to do some ones there that are supposed to be mutually exclusive, though. So we saw that multiple were able to be using actions that are mutually exclusive. And if we take a look at when we check usability. So if that interaction that comes in is mutually exclusive, which is what would happen, we then check, do we have active interactions? And if it isn't one of the active ones, then it's invalid, and then it checks perform accounts. The problem actually is where we go and mark an interaction as begun. If we take a look at where we do began interaction, and the easiest way to see this, because that is this is happening in our interactable, uh, that happens, and we can find that on began, that happens when we actually start to use it, not when we lock it. So when we actually lock it, is when we need to be telling it that it's actually active. So what I'm going to do is in our simple interactable, I am going to set up, uh, it'll be largely the same as this, but we'll have a lock of an interaction. So we have locked interaction. And that looks good. So when we abandon or when we finish ones, that should clean up them properly. Uh, but then we want to make sure our locked interaction uh, is everywhere where we had our began interaction. So that means uh, with our interfaces, things like of that, we need to update those. So I'm going to put that in here. Just enforces that everything actually makes use of it. And then into, in our interaction itself, uh, what we're going to do, which we're doing here, I will go and in our lock logic, if it gets down to here, so here's where it's actually locked it. We're going to do owner uh, locked interaction former and this. So that should allow that to work a little bit better, hopefully without breaking a dozen different other things, but that just means that it communicates that earlier. So that worked better. That turned on the TV. Now we've got other ones watching programs. No one is managing to join them though. So that's something that something seems to be going awry there. So we do want to figure out what's happening with that. So again, the one we're wanting to check is our is usable logic because likely what's happening is it's going to be something that's been missed with this. So, okay, an interaction's come in. This is just checking for anything. So there are active interactions. It's going to check, okay, if that one is mutually exclusive, which it is. Now this shouldn't really filter out nulls. So if it's a inter if in interaction is null, it actually shouldn't skip it because that would block things being able to select it. So I'm going to check here uh, also that in interaction is not equal to null. Then we can actually check if it's different. Otherwise, it's just going to never pick ones as soon as someone else is using it. So let's try that now. That should make things hopefully a bit happier. Someone goes and turns on the power and then 
all three of them, and they join the same interaction, which is what we wanted. So that's good. So we can re-enable our microwave and our bookshelves, things like of that. So that's good. We can see that working with all of those AIs. So we've now got our new interaction system all up and running. Uh, it was a fair bit involved to actually get it up and running. But now that we have it there, it's going to be significantly easier for us working with in future. We've also got the beginnings of debugging support there, which mean that we can get a lot of information out of it, which is really handy. So that's going to make our life a lot easier going forward with that. So dive on in and experiment with this. See what kinds of things you might want to add to it. See what things you can create with it. Thanks, folks. Hope you found the video interesting and helpful. If you have, try and like and subscribe. It really helps out. It's really appreciated. If you are looking for the code for the project, there are three links in the description. The first is to the code as it was at the beginning of this video. The second is a link to the code as it is now. And the final will be a link to the completed package. So all of those are available. You can use those in any of your own projects, commercial or non-commercial ones. If you have any questions, chuck those in a comment below. And if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, then I do a Patreon, and there's a link to that in the description also. But until next time, bye!